Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new around here, my name is Tanya and I make lifestyle vlogs, Disney vlogs and a lot of book content. I haven't made a book video for a while so I thought let's do one because I've read 20 books so far this year and I think that's a good check-in to chat through what I've read, how I feel about it, how I'm getting towards my goals this year and just generally chat about books on my channel because it's one of my big passions and I absolutely love it and I want to share that with you so let's get into it. I thought we could start by having a quick look through my Storygraph app which is where I track all of the books that I've read for the year. I've been doing this for a while now, I, I, I kind of moved away from Goodreads, it wasn't really giving me what I wanted. It's useful for some things but Storygraph I really enjoy tracking the stats and understanding my reading habits. Um, and I'm going to do the fancy screen recording thing here so you can see what I'm looking at on my phone at the same time. And as you can see here, my reading goal for 2024 was to read eight, 80 books. Um, it's normally 100, but this year I really wanted to not force myself to read a lot really. I wanted to just really slow down, consider the things that I was reading and read more fun things and not just shoving books in at the end of the year to get to my target and feel shit about it. So I reduced it down to 80. I'll probably read over 80, let's be honest, but at least I don't feel the pressure to reach 100 every year. We're currently mid-May through March. So 20 books, 25% of the year. It's pretty good going. I'm, I'm, I'm ahead by three books according to this, so I'm not doing too badly, I guess, but I wanted to just look at this in more depth. You can see here that a lot of the things that I've read this year are reflective, emotional, adventurous and mysterious, which is actually a shift from last year. Last year was a lot more dark, challenging, tense, um, and I'm trying to diversify a little bit this year and read a bit more fantasy, a bit more sci-fi and try and push the boat out a little bit. So it's already kind of showing here that I'm being more reflective and emotional. I generally read a lot of middle pace books, you can see that here. Uh, and then we go into the page numbers. So last year I was trending more towards thinner, smaller books because I was just trying to churn through that target, right? But this year I'm trying to lean into what I actually want to read. And I can see this already reflected here. So 10% are already 500 pages plus. So that's quite a lot. You know, over half of the rest of the books are in the 300 to 500 pages, which are quite chunky books for me. I've read a lot more nonfiction this year. I've got really into listening to audiobook whilst driving to work. I'm driving to work more these days because I just enjoy being in the office and being around people a bit. So I'm listening to a lot more audiobooks on the way in. Nonfiction versus fiction, 30% versus 70. Uh, and here you can see the biggest, the biggest stats from this year that's changed is the audiobook. So 65% of what I've read this year already is audiobooks, which is a big amount for me. Last year, I think it was like 20 to 30%. So this year already being 65% is huge. That's, that's, that's actually quite a lot. Um, print 25% and then digital 10%. So I'm using my Kindle a lot less, a lot less at the minute because I'm listening to audiobooks, but that kind of fluctuates. Uh, as we get into the summer and we're going away more, um, I'll probably end up taking my Kindle to read in the car or, you know, at a cabin or whatever we decide to do on holiday. Yeah, 20 books so far this year already. And I thought we could dive straight into that and tell you about the books that I have read already this year. So the first book I read this year is I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. I mean, I enjoyed this. It was average. I gave it 2.5 stars or 2.75 stars. It's about a stalker that is really obsessed with a man that she wanted to be with. Um, and she ends up kind of like infiltrating his life and, you know, finding out where his sister lives and his girlfriend and things like that. Stalkery vibes. Um, I enjoyed it. That's pretty much all I have to say on this one, to be honest. Uh, the second book I read this year was um, Lessons in Chemistry. I did actually read this on audiobook, but I had got gifted this for International Women's Day last year from work. I thoroughly enjoyed this and it was my second book of the year and already my first five star read. There's something really special about this. I know it's a work of fiction, but I kind of believe it. Like I feel like it could be a real woman living in the real age and it really made me connect to someone who is a woman, a woman in the tech industry or the video games industry specifically. And women are still a minority, a very large minority in our industry. There isn't that many women. When I started in my last company, I was one of two. So in a 150 company. It's a, it's a big deal <laughs> and I really related to that part of this. You know, she didn't want to become a mother necessarily, but it was kind of forced upon her. She's had a lot of tricky situations in her life and trying to get ownership of her work. And I just, 
I really related to her character and I really enjoyed it and glad that I got to spend some time with Elizabeth Zott in her world. I know that there is a Netflix series of this and I haven't watched it yet but I am worried that it's not going to live up to the expectations of reading the actual book. Comments on that at a later point but I highly recommend this book. It was really fun and look at the inside of the sleeve cover. I know everyone's probably talked about this but it's it's even the book itself is fucking beautiful so go read it also i've just found a little note inside that the person that gifted it to me had written because i hadn't because i read the audiobook i've not seen this so it just says you have great taste in books love from your secret admirer which it was it was a work person so <laughs> how cute is that next up i read paris's memoir as in paris hilton I'd heard a lot about her and obviously I grew up her with being in the spotlight and she was kind of played off as being a bit of a bimbo and a bit, you know, party animal and a bit stupid. And I didn't realise how traumatic a life she'd had and how an interesting person she is. So I got the audiobook of this, which was read by Paris herself. I just found it really fascinating. I love learning about women and not necessarily conformating women. And she's definitely not one of those people. She's inventive she basically created the media industry and being a celebrity i also find it really fascinating her relationship with like her parents and her upbringing because she went to one of those horrible camps it's a whole thing that i didn't realize so, so go read into it if you want to but i just find it really interesting and i find her a lot deeper than a lot of people give her credit for and i think you should go read this and understand her as a person and not as a media personality this kick started a whole deep into like autobiography memoirs kind of thing for me this year and I really enjoyed this book by Paris so I'd highly recommend it if you haven't already. Next we have Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawada. I, this was kind of forgettable. It's about language and a forgotten a forgotten city or country which is Japan and like re reconnecting with that as something that doesn't exist anymore but finding people that have lived there or speak the language and reconnecting with those people. This was a little bit disappointing. It was average, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the depth that I was wanting it to be. So give it a read, but not my favorite so far. Next, I read the audiobook for Friendaholic, which is Confessions of a Friendship Addict by Elizabeth Day. Now my friend had read this and thought it was brilliant and asked her friends to read it so that she could chat about it and it makes sense friendaholic right but this is about a woman who has a lot of friendships but not necessarily depth within friendships so she likes having lots of friends like collecting them you know like it's a connection of this that, and that, the other but she didn't have like a really deep connection with many of them and about how the pandemic affected her friendships and how she thought she had a lot of friendships and realized that she had like one that she really valued and leaned into that and it's, it just talks about women's friendships and I thought it was really interesting and it made me really evaluate who I prioritise in my life and who I give my time to and why and and kind of like getting rid of that assumption that you have to be friends with everyone. I think it's okay to be friendly with everyone and you know be a nice person but I don't think you need to have 800 friends to invite to a wedding if you want to. Like I think for me I would rather have really deep meaningful connections with one or two people than have 20 that I don't really care about. It was a really good exploration of women friendships and the depth of friendship and what that entails and I would highly recommend it if you're interested in learning more about that. The next book I read is What You Are Looking For is in the Library by Michiko Owayama and this is about a library where people go in to find books, it's Japanese translated by the way, and it's about going into the library to find what you think you want from the bookshelves and actually discovering other books and things that actually draw you on the right path in life. It's quite hard to explain. I really enjoyed this book. A lot of Japanese fiction I read that's translated is a bit gimmicky um, and I thought that was what this was going to be but it wasn't actually. It was a gimmick with a, with a meaningful and a, and a lesson behind it so I really enjoyed that and I would highly recommend. And I don't say that very often about all the translated fiction that I read. For example, the one that I mentioned before, The Scattered All Over the Earth. Then next up I read Britney Spears' The Woman in Me. This this was the <laughs> this is the fallout from Paris Hilton memoir and me kind of getting sucked into this whole thing. I really like Britney Spears again. I grew up with her as a singer, very famous. I know she's had the conservative ship and it's been really like in the media and prevalent over the last few years. I just wanted to understand more about that and how she had to live her life and the restrictions. I didn't come away with it like a, a lesson learned or like really felt inspired by it. I just 
understood her a bit better but I still don't really understand her as a person I think it only gave me kind of a half story and it was only a few hours long so it did feel a bit cash cowy that's okay I still like Britney Spears I like her music I like her as a person and it gave me a bit more in depth into her life but I wanted a little bit more I wanted a little bit more I was left wondering more Next up we have People From My Neighbourhood by Hiromi Kawakami. This is, it's, it's actually tiny by the way, like this is a normal book so you can see the scale, it's, it's a lot smaller and it's very thin. But this is one of those books like I say that like translates from Japan but doesn't really give me much. It's about a bunch of different people that live in a magical realism town and all the stories are literally like you can't really tell on camera, one pages or two pages and then it goes on to a different story. Lots of little things you can dip in and out of this, the stories don't necessarily have to connect but it was okay, it was a little disappointing but I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> Next up I read Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I got this on an audiobook app I mean it was okay, it's too YA for me, I realised that halfway through but carried on finishing it anyway it's alright if you like that kind of thing and I would highly recommend if you're into like fantasy, YA, romance. Just not my thing. So it was okay but wouldn't read, I wouldn't read the second one in the duology. Bubble tea break. Every year I try and sneak on a classic into my list because we never really read that many classics when I was at school and I feel like I should go back and try and, and read them. Last year I read Dracula for the first time by Bram Stoker and this year I picked Emma by Jane Austen because I've got told that this is one of the better ones if you're not really into that kind of like classics vibes. I listened to this on the audiobook but I do have the vintage classic edition because I bought it a while ago and absolutely love the cover. I wasn't that impressed by this book. Don't at me for all those Jane Austen fans but it seemed, I mean I kind of get the premise. Jane, Emma is about like a woman that in the in her age would normally be married off but instead she refuses to be married and spends all of her time setting up all of her other friends to get married and marry above their station or their class and try and like highlight them in society and it's all about that really and how she like fucks it up and how she builds relationships and how she puts her dad first and doesn't want all of these stereotypical things that women should want in that time like marriage and babies and you know all that kind of thing and dating and all that and parties but <laughs> spoiler alert if you don't want to know the ending of this click further along but I felt like this was kind of the ending didn't really suit it like at the end she just kind of goes oh yeah I do actually want to marry a dude and fuck over all my friends that I've tried to set up with him anyway and he's all mine now and we're not friends and it, it just felt really like jarring I was listening to audiobook and I was just like did I just accidentally read another book like <laughs> midway through so I kind of liked the idea of it at first being about you know anti-establishment and I'm not going to be a married woman and I'm going to do all these things that are not good in society at those times and then she just conformed to them all anyway so it just felt kind of pointless and you know it's not a short book there's like a good how many pages in this? 600? For it to just all turn out how you would expect a romance to turn out in those times anyway so it felt a bit pointless to me. I'm glad I read a Jane Austen. Was this the favourite book I've ever read? No. Would I recommend it? Also no. <laughs> but if anyone has a better, I've never read Pride or Prejudice, I've never read any of those things so if you think that those are gonna impress me more than this comment to me in the comments but if not I've read Jane Austen, didn't really enjoy it. Next. The next thing I read this year was Crooked Kingdom which is the second one in the duology of the Six of Crows by Lee Bardu. Bordeaux? Bordeaux. This was a book club book, we've read the first one um, Six of Crows as a book club book and I really enjoyed it so we decided to read the second one as a group. Also really enjoyed it. I did listen to this one on audiobook rather than physical book this time and it I found it quite, it was good because all the different characters are voiced by different people so it's quite easy to follow. I was driving to and from work whilst listening to this and I think I just got really distracted so I kind of missed some like big hitters in here that I should be feeling emotional attachment to and I didn't because of the way I read it so I do want to go back and reread this at some point because I feel like I missed some 
some of the, the key plot points that I should have been upset about. And when we talked about it in book club, I was like, oh, I did not get that bit. So like, I've definitely missed some big bits, but I enjoyed it. I really like the duology. Does it make me want to read more of them? Like the Shadow and Bone stuff? Not really. I really enjoyed the, the duology in itself and I would highly recommend it if you want to read it. There's a lot of depth to the characters that I didn't get until I was at book club and my friend Julia started talking about it and I was like, oh, this is actually a lot deeper than I thought it was. Um, but I would read it physically rather than audiobook so I can actually pay attention properly to what was going on. The next few I'm just going to blast through because I'm running out of time and it's my lunch break at work so I need to go back to work. I read Nice Dragons Finished Last um, which is the Hark Striker series. I read the first in, in the series as a buddy read and I enjoyed it and I'm going to keep reading it which is by Rachel Aaron. I also read they Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Not really a massive fan, probably won't pick up the second one, but I wanted to read it to get it off my shelf because it's been sat on my physical shelf for ages. Then next I read Days at the Murasaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa, um, another Japanese translated book about a bookshop. It was nice, the bookshop was a nice setting to read because I like books, but nothing massively special. Then next I read Secrets of the Human Body, which is by um, Chris Van... Tulliken and Andrew Cohen Van Tulliken, which are twins, are both in medicine and they talk about the human body. Absolutely fascinating. I really enjoyed this book. I got it on Zigzag and it's just about the human body. It's about the brain. It's about memory. It's about life. It's about having babies. Like I just found it really fascinating to learn. Like I don't learn very often anymore and this really like triggered that learning phase and I wanted to learn more about why we think this way and all that kind of stuff. I gave this 4.5 4 stars, I really enjoyed it and for like six quid that I got it on Zigzag, the app, bargain. Next on the self-help slash informative reading binge that I was on, I read 4,000 weeks time management for mortals. This was recommended by a friend and it's about like timekeeping and how much time we have in life and what's the best way to use it and to prioritize the things that you love and it's just you know like figuring out how you want to spend your time on this planet because it's not a guarantee so you know if you want to retire and be a painter why are you waiting till retirement why are you not doing painting every day or every weekend to build up to that thing so that you know you love it when you do it in retirement it's just a really fascinating way to think about time and how as a human race we are constantly made to feel like we need to be productive but then we make systems to help us with those and make our lives easier but it just puts more pressure on us to continue doing more and more and more and to like really think about that and step back and go what actually am I contributing and like where is the best use of my time and so yeah it was really interesting to read I gave it a 3.5 stars um I didn't take away anything massively from this like I haven't it hasn't changed my life perspective on how I manage my time but it definitely makes me think more about what I value and what I should be prioritizing and it's okay to rest and restore and have time away from things so that you can come and show up better in the time that you do have in the things that you want to put your time into so it was just it was just a really interesting read and a bit self-helpy I'm getting into self-help at the minute yeah it was it was interesting I got it from the library so completely free and I would highly recommend if you can get it on the library app to just read next up I read Rouge by Mona Awad what can I say about her? Mona Awad read Bunny, which if you haven't read Bunny was completely off, off the hook and hinged. And so is this, strangely enough. I enjoyed it. Uh, I gave it a 4.25 stars. It's about a woman whose mother dies, but they both like have this invested interest in skincare and looking young and youthful. And when her mum dies, she discovers that she's been part of this like secret culty club and she kind of gets sucked into it and it's kind of discovering what this club is about and why her mum got sucked into it and it's just it's a really interesting book because it's it's quite confusing and it can be as, as deep or as surface level as you want it to be i didn't quite understand it once i'd finished it and i spent a long time like on reddit like what the hell does this book mean and i actually found out that there's a lot of different threads in this that i'd caught i'd caught but hadn't quite like figured out and it's just really fascinating. You could read this in multiple, multiple ways. There's like three or four different interpretations that I saw on the internet and I understood all of them. So I think this, again, would be a really good one to read in a book club and see how everyone's opinions and threads that they pick up on make sense to them and see what the discussion is. So yeah, I, I did really enjoy this and I really like Mona Awad's work actually. I'm looking forward to whatever she brings out next. Really good for book club and for discussion. 
Only three books left. We're getting there, folks. Don't worry. Next up, we have Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before? As someone that's been... Oh, by Julie Smith. Sorry, Dr. Julie Smith. Um, as someone that's been in therapy for over a year now, weekly, working on myself, understanding myself better and how I communicate with people, this is a really interesting book in terms of, like, it teaches you that stuff, kind of. It is like therapy in a book. It has lots of different subheadings and like categories so I was, I was trying to listen to this on audiobook and realize that like I don't just need to like chronologically listen to this book and, and take in all the information I'd rather have it so that I can refer back to it when there's something in particular that I need to be reading about so let's just pick an example grief there's a bit about grief in here um I haven't had to particularly deal with grief in my adult life it's good to know that if I ever really needed like a handy book to just go to and be like why am I feeling this way there's possibly something in here that I can read and go okay like that makes sense and I can start to understand my feelings a little better so this is just a good one to have and to reference I didn't finish the audiobook completely because like I said I didn't feel like I needed to listen to it all in one go but I did buy the physical copy so that I have it to hand if I ever need it. Next was another book club pick. We do it once a month, by the way. So like generally I have these smattered in and this was March's one. And it was Shigidi and the Brass Head of Abolufon by Hole Talibi, which is a South African um, book about trying to steal back some of the bits in the British Museum that don't belong to the British Museum anymore and, and, and um, belong to other cultures and they're trying to steal it back. It's got a lot of reference to um, like gods um, and different cultures and it was really interesting to read about. I don't really read that much from, from that region before so it was good in diversifying myself and it made me want to read more about the gods and like what they believe in in their traditions. The book itself was quite hard to follow. I listened to it on audiobook and I know this is really picky and I'd paid for it but the guy that was reading it had a really whistly nose <laughs> and I listened to it in the car so I read I listened to it really loudly so I can hear it on the motorway and I could just hear every breath was like a whistly nose and I don't know how that was not caught by the people recording it but anyway it was quite distracting so I didn't take this in as much as I would like to have taken this in if you know what I mean I might reread this at some point to really understand it better because I don't feel like I really fully enjoyed it as much as I could have. And then last but not least, because this is only the 20th book I've read of the year, <laughs> and I'm probably gonna read another 80, but I finished this yesterday, and this is The Memory of Animals by Claire Fuller. And this is about a group of people who are doing a medical trial to find a vaccine for a pandemic hitting virus. Um, yes, it was written after COVID, so I think that's the point of it. And it's just about these people that get infected with the virus and are trialed with the vaccine. And some people survive, some don't, and trying to live in a world where they don't know how to handle it because everyone's dead. It's probably a bit too on the nose and too soon for some people. And, and that's totally fine, but I, I enjoyed it. I read the hardback. It has a lot of themes of like memory, obviously, and how we can like tap back into memories and when we don't have the people around us that we love because they've passed because of the pandemic, like how do we get back in touch with them? Is it through like memories? And uh, I don't really want to talk too much about it because there's some spoilers in there. So <laughs> and that's why I'm being quite vague. But I did enjoy this book. It did go on for a little bit longer than I would have liked it to, if I'm being entirely honest. It's just interesting to start reading about the pandemic and seeing it show up in books and themes and how that wants to be portrayed. So I've not really read anything about the pandemic since the pandemic. So it, yeah, it's the first book I've picked up about that and it was just interesting to, to read about it from that perspective. Having lived through one for two years and have been out the other side for another two years now, so wild times people wild times but yeah that was the last book i read of this year so yeah that was a very intense whistle stop tour of the last 20 books that i've read so far this year let me know if any of those are of interest to you and we can chat about it in the comments below let me know what you're reading this year what your goals are if you've liked this video and let's see if i can read another 20 in the next three months and i'll do another update then or whether you prefer to have a little small incremental updates but they're just harder to film if i'm honest because i need to find the time to make a little video but anyway i digress i hope you've enjoyed this video give it a like if you've enjoyed it follow along for more um and i will see you in my next book video i'm hoping to do another book haul travel day 
vlog soon so keep your eyes peeled for that but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Mwah! i should probably go